I'm going to show you how to create a full length song in GarageBand and it's actually a lot easier than you would think. So first I have my iPhone. I'm going to turn it on. Go to GarageBand. So this is a song that I uh, have previously made. You can see there's lots of different parts to it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the beginning. All right, the first step is you want to create a song. So in the upper left-hand corner, there is a plus mark. You're going to click that, and then you'll click Create New Song. Once you do that, you will see different instruments that you can choose from. There's a smart guitar, smart keyboard, smart bass, smart strings, smart drums. There's a sampler so you can record your voice and you can play around with it and make it sound like a monster or a robot. There's an audio recorder. There's an amp that you could plug in your phone to a guitar and actually record your playing. There's a drum kit and there's a keyboard. And there's also a drummer function that lets you create beats. But let's start with, whenever I start a song, I always like to start with the bass. Once you click on the bass, you'll see a screen that looks like this. You can either pick the notes by clicking on them, or you can have the GarageBand app play for you, which is the easiest and quickest way to, to do a song. To do that, you'll see in the top there is this icon. It looks like a knob. If you, cl if you click that, oops, you're going to get a screen that says autoplay. Now there's four different autoplay selections and they all sound different. Uh, to start the autoplay, simply click on a chord and it'll start playing. And what you should do is play around with this and, and try to get a chord progression that you're comfortable with for your song. And there's four different ones you can choose from. So I'm going to choose one here to start us off. I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose the third one. All right, so you're ready to record. So let's stop this by clicking on the, the cord, we'll turn it off. So to record, you're going to click the red button at the top. Oops. Let me just slide my slider back to the beginning. The red button right here will start. Now what you want to do before you record is probably turn off the metronome, otherwise it will go throughout your recording and it will be distracting. So to turn off your metronome, simply click so it's no longer blue. Now when you're recording, you can see that there are eight numbers at the top of the screen along what looks like a ruler bar. Those are your bars and every bar is equivalent to approximately two seconds. Or so. So we're going to have like a 16 second or so song when we're done here. And it'll just keep looping when we're done. If you want to make that longer, simply click on the plus and you can change it from eight bars to, let's say you wanted a, a minute song. Just simply change the eight to a 30. You can also do automatic and it will continue on until you're done recording and hit stop. So just to make this easy, I'm going to keep it on 8, and then I'm going to hit record and I'm going to play through and record our first few seconds here. And 
and now it's done and it'll just keep looping through. Uh, one thing that you have to do is make sure that whenever, let me stop it, whenever you are changing chord, you want to change it right on these numbers. So my first chord was the first bar. Once the, I got to the two, I clicked my second chord, which was A minor. Once I got to the third bar, I clicked my E minor. Uh, that way, it'll make it a lot easier for you to sync up all of your instruments. All right, so our bass is laid down. Next, we're going to choose our next instrument. To do that, we're going to choose, we're going to go back to the slider, which is this button right here. It has the boxes. It's just going to take us back to that window that we can just cycle through. Next, we're going to choose a guitar. And we're going to do smart guitar, so we're going to click that knob. Uh, okay. So one other thing that you can do is you can choose what type of guitar you want. Like right now, I've got an electric guitar there. To change the type of guitar that I want, I'm going to click that drop down arrow box. I get my songs and I get hard rock. I'm going to click on hard rock and then I have four different types of guitars to choose from. I'm going to choose acoustic. Okay, so now I have an acoustic guitar. And again, I can, I'm going to do the autoplay function. So I'm just going to cycle through here. Now what you can do is you can play your bass line and then you can practice and see what sounds the best. So we'll practice with this and see how it sounds. All right, let's say that I like that. I'm going to use that, so I'm going to, I always just scroll back to the beginning here. And I'm going to put this down. I like to have the bass in first because it helps me stay on track with the with the chord changes. So my metronome's off. I'm going to hit record. Okay, so I just made a mistake. So what happens if you make a mistake and you're not happy with it? All you have to do just to start over is there is an arrow there, so just an arrow with a, a bend in it. If you click that, it just takes out your last recording and you're right back to where you were right before your error. So you can do that as many times as you need. So let's start this again. All right, so now I'm happy with that. All my chords matched up uh, with my uh, chord changes on each uh, bar. So I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna add it. We'll add something else. Let's do smart strings. All right, with smart strings, again, you can just add a single note. The lower you click, the lower the uh, octave will be. If you go higher, you can pluck higher notes uh, for the strings. We'll go to the autoplay function again. Uh, for this one, you can choose what type you want, what type of strings you want. There's cinematic, modern, pop, and romantic. Um, I'll just keep it with pop, and we'll cycle through and see what these sound like. Now, if you want to take out some, some of the strings, you can just click on it. Like if I only want the violins, I just deselect the second violins, violas, cellos, and basses, and they're gone. If I only want low strings, I can just select the basses. So you can kind of play around with it. We'll just leave them all selected for now.
we'll do three. It's pretty dramatic, so hopefully this sounds good. Let's stop that. And let's record this. All right, so it started in the middle of my song there, so I'm going to go back and just drag it back to the beginning. I don't want to record in the middle of nowhere. All right, turn my metronome off. All right, here we go. All right, I don't like the way that sounds, so I'm going to choose two. Start over again. All right, that's done. Hit stop. Go back to the beginning. All right, the last thing that you can do is you can add a keyboard or you can do drums. Uh, we'll just add a keyboard in there. There's different types of keyboards. You got grand piano, classic rock, electric piano. There's actually more options here than, than for most of the instruments. Um, we'll do, I guess we'll just leave it at grand piano. Again, you can. Just click on it and play different notes. There's also a cool function on the piano. This up arrow here, if you click on it, the arpeggiator, if you turn that on, you can do a lot of different things with the, the notes and it'll just automatically play. You can choose a note order, such as up and down or down. That'll be the order the notes are played in. And then you just click and it'll just run through the, the notes and you can you can make it two octaves, four octaves. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we're just going to do the autoplay and keep this basic. So we're going to just... All right, I like the first one. So I'm going to return to the beginning by clicking the, the back arrow there. And let's start this off and put this in. So that's in. My song's almost complete. There's just one more thing to add. I'm going to put some drums in by clicking the, the boxes there, go to my slider. And the drums are the easiest part. We're going to go to, you can either play your own drums and make your own track just by clicking there. But I find it's a lot easier to do the smart drums. Here we go. So you get a grid, and you can just drag the, the piece of the drum kit that you want there, and it'll just start playing. The higher you go, the louder it is. The lower you go on the, the grid, the softer it is. The more to the left you go, the more simpler the beat will be. And the farther you go to the right, the more complex. So what I always do, instead of just playing around with this and driving myself crazy, I hit this dice, and this die will just automatically place some instrument or some pieces of the drum kit together. And you can click it as many times as you want until you get a combination that you think fits your song. So I'll say that sounds good. I'll just return to the beginning, and then all I have to do is hit record and just let the drums play through. And now my song is complete. So if I want to do any editing with it, if I click at the top where you saw those bars, I can get to this screen 
this just shows me all the notes and there's a little slider bar that you can slide out here let's say that you did you don't really like the piano like it's okay but you don't want that much piano you can play through and you can slide the piano down if you just want a little bit of piano there so you can change how much an instrument is turned up or down in your track it's actually pretty cool maybe you want more uh, drums turn those up less drums and and more strings So I'll just keep everything basically even. I usually like to have a little bit more bass, a little less strings, a little less piano, some more drums. And you're done. So the song's completed. I can now just go back to my songs and my song will be saved. There's, it's called My Song 4. These are other songs that I've created. I'm just going to click on it, and if I want to change the name, I will just call it um, Tutorial, which is, I'm having trouble typing because I have a camera right above this. There we go. Hit Done. It's saved. Just as a real quick thing, if you want to export your song, you just click the... Uh, you select it and you click what's called a share in the top left corner and you could airdrop this song to somebody that's in range you could send it to iTunes you could send it to your iCloud drive you can make it a ringtone so that if somebody called that's what would play uh, you could open it in uh, it gives you my name and it'll export it you can open it in a certain app I usually copy it in iMovie whenever I make my iMovies and you can put it into whatever movie you have. And I'll just drop it in there. And then you could set it to either photos or videos just by clicking those in. Uh, but that's for another time. I'm going to end this video by showing you the completed song with a little bit better sound. Thank you for watching.